Welcome to the Humanities Team Podcast with me, Steve Farrell. Humanities Team is an international spiritual movement whose purpose is to communicate and demonstrate the timeless truth that we are all one, with the divine and all life, caring for each other and the world we share, so that people's actions reflect this profound understanding within our generation. We believe that living this truth is essential to resolving the most chronic and acute world challenges and vital to creating a flourishing world of peace, harmony, and happiness. We offer transformative education programs in personal and spiritual development, and we host an annual event called Global Oneness Day. Similar to Earth Day, which galvanized the global environmental movement, Global Oneness Day has become a catalyst for spiritual activism and an integral part of the present-day global oneness movement, which represents a profound new paradigm in human culture. Humanities Team is the only global nonprofit organization working in transformational education. Since we are a nonprofit, there is no focus on growing profits or satisfying shareholders, and 100% of all revenue goes toward our work supporting conscious evolution, planetary awakening, and flourishing at every level of life. If you'd like to learn more about us or want to support our mission directly through donation or volunteering some of your time, please visit us online at humanitiesteam.org. And lastly, if you enjoy this podcast, we'd be grateful if you'd leave us a review. Welcome to the program, everybody. Hey, great to be with you. As you can see, I'm here with a special guest, Dr. Noman Naim. And uh, Noman, welcome to the program. Thank you, Steve, for having me. It's always great to be have these conversations with you. Yeah, well, we always uh, look forward to these, too. As you can see, uh, Dr. Naim is in scrubs. He actually has somebody covering for him there in the uh, hospital environment that he's working from today. So thanks for taking time out of your uh, busy schedule to be with us, Noman. It uh, is always truly a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward to this. All right, so our theme here is turning fear into flow, and we were just sharing before coming onto the program. Boy, is this a good time to be talking about turning fear into flow or what? So we're going get to get into a great conversation. So let me give uh, Noman a proper introduction. So Dr. Naeem is a physician specializing in pulmonary and critical care medicine whose intellectual journey has taken him far beyond the confines of conventional medicine. Over the course of his career, he has treated tens of thousands of patients and has realized that the majority of patients with chronic disease do not heal, a percentage of whom have no desire to heal. Dr. Naeem created an online program to help people to journey to healing uh, if this is what they desire. So we're going to be talking about his online program. It just came to the Humanity Stream Plus platform. Also, uh, Dr. Naeem wrote a book called Healing from the Inside Out, and he's working on a second book. We'll uh, be sure to get to those topics here during the hour, too. So again, welcome to the program, uh, Noman. It, uh, it's really terrific to be here with you. Uh, it's great to uh, be in conversation with you around uh, these timely topics. Yeah, and you know, when we had uh, Noman with us uh, a little over a year ago, COVID was just opening up. So, But we got into a fascinating mm -hmm. conversation then, and and now, of course, we still got it. Uh, hopefully, we're on the back side of this. Uh, so, Noman, let's um, let's just talk about your journey because it's fascinating to me. You're uh, a, a doctor and a surgeon in a hospital environment, and and you share that you noticed that people that are chronically ill, the vast majority of them don't get better. Uh, and you made an observation about them, and this is why I think you you wrote a book, why you created an online program. Mm -hmm. Uh, to help people here, uh, so and this is such an important topic. Can you can you tell us a little bit about this journey? Sure. Uh, just one correction, Steve. I'm not a surgeon. I am a critical care doctor, but I don't do surgery. I do procedures. So just in case, uh, just to clarify. okay. Thank you. So yeah. you know, I, yeah. No, no, that's okay. Um, I've I've always been interested in human potential and human behavior, <clears throat> and I think that interest really stemmed from uh, some early experiences in my life where. You know, I have faced a lot of challenges uh, and adversity, um, you know, around uh, racial discrimination. And um, I mean, I, I didn't really understand why 
uh, I was seen differently just because I was a different ethnicity than the community I was in or a different belief system. And, um, you know, a lot of challenges around that. So, you know, I started to really um, dive deep into human behavior, why people act and behave the way I do. And that led me into um, kind of the human potential area. I mean, how can we reach our, our highest potential? And I was reading authors like like Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer and and those sorts of people, um, you know, long before I, I um, you know, even went to university. And I got really, really fascinated with this topic. And, uh, you know, when I entered uh, university, um, I, I, I picked a career in medicine because it seemed to uh, combine a lot of the, the interests I had. I was interested in science and learning. I was interested in working with people. Um, and I wanted the ability to work anywhere in the world, which a, phys a physician can, right, if you have the right licensing. So um, I entered, uh, you know, I entered medical school. I got, I specialized in um, internal medicine and pulmonary critical care. And I got into practice. And during that time, like, I, I had been reading a lot about human potential before that, but then I got really busy with my practice. Then when I got into practice, I started going back to that and, and started re reading a lot of newer authors like, um, you know, Neil Donald Walsh and Eckhart Tolle. And, and, and one thing I noticed uh, in my practice was that um, this, this uh, uh, overwhelming amount of chronic disease that I was seeing like people were living with all these chronic diseases and um, majority, we would just kind of keep them in the same state and keep them stable, but they would not get better. So I started to, to question um, conventional medicine and started to ask a deeper question as to why are people not healing and why do people get acutely ill and end up in the hospital? Um, so, you know, what I realized is this, um, is that conventional medicine operates with a limited paradigm. Now, I, I still practice conventional medicine uh, because I see myself as a bridge between that and uh, uh, a greater understanding of health and healing, which is why I wrote my book, Healing from the Inside Out. But conventional medicine operates in a limited paradigm. That limited paradigm is just physical. So it sees the individual as just a, uh, um, as a physical being, the physiology and that's why the, the interventions are mainly pharmaceutical procedures, surgeries. But if you look at human beings, we are a lot more complex than just physical beings. We have a mental aspect to ourselves. We have our thoughts. We have our mind. There's the emotional self. We have our emotions and our feelings, which I feel is just um, how our uh, lower self communicates with our higher self. There is a vibrational aspect to who we are. Um, that's our energy. Because if you break down who we are, we're made up of organ systems, organs, tissues, cells. Cells are broken down into molecules. Molecules are atoms, and atoms are made up of subatomic particles. And those are, according to quantum physics, just um, energy uh, vibrating at a very high frequency. There's a vibrational self. And then there's the spiritual aspects of who we are. And, and that I, I like to refer to as consciousness or being. So what I've, in that deeper aspect of who we are, that transcends our, our physiology and even our thoughts and emotions. And what I discovered was, uh, you know, medicine, conventional medicine does not take all of this into account. And that's what got me started uh, on my journey to learning more about what truly is uh, the meaning of health and healing. So that's yeah, kind of boy. my journey in a nutshell. Fantastic. Yeah. Boy, and uh, uh, medicine needs to move beyond the Newtonian. And if that's what you've done is you've really yes. you've brought in consciousness and just that this is we don't have a separate body over there, a physical, separate, emotional, separate, spiritual. That You know, there's uh, there's there's consciousness that is uh, the eternal thing living right. within a body. So it's it's fantastic. The work you're doing. Let's talk now about and then you were. Uh, just as COVID was coming out, you were inspired to create this online program called Moving from Fear yes. into Flow. Uh, and this is right. the program. It just came to the Humanity Stream Plus platform. We're going to go look at it in a little bit. But yeah. before we do, uh, Naman, what was the inspiration there? How did you decide, you yeah. know, just as COVID was coming on, to create this online yeah. program? 
So, so, so that's interesting because, you know, when I talk about um, in my book, the healing process, there's like nine different steps I talk about. One of the steps is, um, you know, mastering your emotions, uh, emotional healing. And, you know, fear is an emotion that the majority of us deal with um, at, so, at many points in our life, uh, at some point in our life. And when I look at fear, um, I look at it as, um, well, let, let's talk about fear. Let's, let's, let's get into fear. So I talk about this in my book. There's two types of fear, okay? There's actual fear and there's psychological fear. So what is actual fear? Actual fear is when you, you are facing a real threat. Let's go back thousands of years to our ancient ancestors. You know, we lived out in, in, in the bush. You know, we had to hunt and forage, um, you know, lived off the land. A, a fear would be you come across a predator and your life is in danger. So that's an actual fear. Your life is in danger, right? So you have to do something. You have to escape. You have to fight, whatever. And this is where the, the, the fight or flight response uh, comes into play, right? Then there's psychological fear. So now in our modern society, we don't have a lot of the challenges that our ancient ancestors had. You know, we don't have to hunt and forage. We don't have to, you know, you know, live live out on the land. You know, we live in relatively, most of us in the West live in relatively comfortable, for the most part, not everybody, most comfortable, um, you know, the circumstances. So the thing is that there's a part of us called the ego. And the ego is the lower self, and it is the part of us that is um, that is crucial to our survival. And it is that ego that that keeps uh, that helps us survive when we're in danger and we have threats. Um, a threat in the modern world would be I don't know you're walking down a dark alley and someone pulls out a gun and asks for your wallet. That's a threat in the modern world. So that's what our ego is, and that's that's where the the fight or the fight or flight response comes in. However, uh, like I said, we don't have a lot of those uh, those challenges that we had thousands of years ago. So the ego needs to latch on to something in order to justify its existence. So it creates all these psychological fears. And, and let me describe this with, with an example. Um, what's an example of a psychological fear? An example would be, um, say, you're in a social situation. You're at a party. And I don't know, you see someone interesting or attractive who you want to you go up and talk to. But something within you um, comes up and says, you know what, I don't know if I should, you know, maybe, you know, that person won't be interested in me, maybe they'll shun me or whatever. So that's an example, a small example of a psychological fear. This is created in the mind. There's actually no legitimate reason for you to have that fear. Now, often our psychological fears are based on our past experiences. So, so for example, just using that example I just described, Say we faced um, rejection in the past uh, through in different circumstances, then you know that would create that psychological fear. But often we use our past experiences to um, to chart our course in our life and to justify our actions or how we act in certain situations. But all our past experiences are they're just experiences. They do not um, they do not determine our present experience or our future experience. Now, that's not to say that if you've had a traumatic experience, it's not going to affect you. So, so the people have had some very difficult traumatic experiences. However, I feel that um, we can move beyond our past. And the way we do that is to live in the present moment. And in the present moment, just dealing with things as they come up and not allowing um, our past to affect how we react to the situation. So that's where the psychological fear comes in. Yeah, yeah, well, all, uh, all things so true. And then, and then in your course, you talk about how to take people through that, how to walk through yeah. our fears and get to flow on the other side, which is, uh, which yeah, is in, talk, in consciousness what's so yeah. crucial. Yeah, I can dive into that if you'd like at this point, if you want to. About yeah, yeah, no, share a, share a, a little bit if you would. Uh, we're going to actually go look yeah. at a clip, everybody here, in just, just uh, a second. We're going to go look at a three-minute clip from the program. But yeah, if you can kind of uh, take us through love to. briefly what that looks yeah. like. So, so the thing is, you know, in my course, there's like six modules, right? So I start with mind and thought because a lot of our fears 
are generated by our, our thinking. And, you know, I talk about something in that module called limiting beliefs and limiting beliefs are um, any belief you have about yourself and in life or the world that keeps you from reaching your highest potential. And, and the way you know you have a limiting belief is that you have a series of personal challenges that keep recurring or a pattern of negative thinking that keeps recurring as well. And that's how you know you have a limiting belief. So I talk about getting beyond our limiting beliefs and, and overcoming our negative thinking. And the second module is all about emotions. And the thing is that, um, you know, there's a whole spectrum of emotions that we can experience in our life. Um, some that are perceived as negative, some are perceived as positive. So everyone wants to migrate to ecstasy, joy, um, happiness, um, you know, those emotions. But the thing is, if you're a human being on this planet, you are going to experience grief loss, you're going to experience sorrow, melancholy, you're going to experience anger, you're going to experience all those negative emotions. And we're not meant to resist those emotions. Because what happens when you resist a negative emotion, um, you know, because of the pain that it brings up, you create suffering. So we need to feel those emotions in a healthy way. Then I talk about life story. And as I've alluded to this already a bit, when we talked about past experiences, everyone has a life story. And not everyone has a wonderful life story. Some of us come from very difficult backgrounds, different challenges, adversities. We are not our life story. So in that module, what I try to do is get the, uh, the, um, the, the person who's, who's in the course to get beyond their life story, not identify with your life story, but you can use your life story to, um, to unlock your gifts because in our deepest wounds, are hidden our greatest gifts. And we need to trace a thread to our life, through our life story, in order to unlock those gifts. Then the next module is about physiology because fear is felt in the body, right? The fight or flight response. Um, fear activates the sympathetic nervous system. There's an autonomic nervous system which controls all our internal functions. The, the sympathetic is um, the one that gets activated in fear where you have to uh, you know, either fight or run um, and then there's a parasympathetic, which is involved in relaxation, involved, involved in um, rest and relaxation and, 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 and the state you want to be in most of the time. You only want to be in sympathetic state when you are actually facing a threat. And then I talk in the physiology about how nutrition affects how our response to challenges, how um, our, uh, you know, exercise, sleep, all those things. Then the fifth module is about connection. It's about connection and oneness because we don't live in isolation in, the, in, in, in this world, in our societies. We are connected with everything and everyone around us. And if the pandemic has shown us anything is that we are all connected, right? Um, we are all connected. And, you know, we have lost a lot of that connection because of the quarantines and the lockdowns and, and, um, and the measures that were needed to prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19. However, um, you know, they, they talk about, um, um, you know, phys physical distancing, right? Physical distancing, but that does not necessarily mean social distancing, right? Because we can still maintain our connections with our loved ones. Um, uh, we maintain our connections with our loved ones and uh, in, in, our, in, our, uh, in our families and our friends. So, um, so that, that there's that connection uh, that is very important. And then the, the last module is um in, uh, in is embracing the unknown right embracing the unknown so you know we face the unknown at every stage in our life um you know for example what has been happening in the last two years did anyone expect all this to happen with the COVID-19 how it spread around the world lockdowns the economic uh, ramifications the the, the health uh, the health ramifications so in that module, I talk about how we can embrace the unknown, um, embracing the unknown. So that's the sixth module. And the unknown is a gift. The unknown, we're meant to, uh, uncertainty is a gift, and most people don't see it that way. And we have to embrace uncertainty and the unknown if we're to get past fear. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, uh, and from a doctor's perspective, too, uh, to see this whole journey from fear into flow, where you bring in right. the, the science and your research and, and observations. Uh, and then you, you mentioned, you know, you from even before you were a doctor, where with uh, Deepak and Wayne Dyer and others, Neil Donald Walsh, the, uh, just bringing in this whole new thought 
aspect, which is, uh, and, and science, of course, is affirming all of the truth of this, uh, of consciousness uh, research here. So uh, fascinating and, and uh, wonderful, really, that you created this online program now during COVID and climate change and these things where, you know, candidly, there is a lot of anxiety and fear in the world. So let's, uh, let's go take a look at this uh, clip. There's a three-minute clip here. Um, so this is from Fear into Flow. This is this online program. We just brought it over to the Humanity Stream Plus platform. And it's, uh, this segment is, is from the Unpacking Your Life Story uh, module. So let's go take a look, and then, uh, then we'll come back. accumulate a life narrative um, you know at different stages of our lives we are going through different experiences right um, and our life story is not is something that is always changing depending on the experiences and the uh, the situation uh, that we find ourselves in right now, Often we have a, a beautiful and a wonderful life story that brings us joy, happiness, and, um, you know, that sense of uh, peace and serenity. But that's not always the case. Often we have a very difficult life story where we're faced with uh, challenges, often it may be sadness, grief, <coughs> anger. Um, it could be shame. It could be any number of those uh, negative emotions that like we discussed in the last lesson. So the thing to understand about our life story is that it, it, we are not always going to be on top of the world. It ebbs and it flows and it is always changing. And it is often as a result of the circumstances we find ourselves in our lives. What you need to realize is regardless of where your life story has taken you uh, and where it brings you to at this point, right here and right now, <clears throat> your life story has enormous power. And I'm going to teach you to harness that power uh, in this lesson. So the first thing to realize is that you are not your story. Often people will identify with their life stories, and this is especially true of people who have had difficult uh, or traumatic stories. Um, you know, you know. For example, if someone has a history of abuse, uh, physical abuse or sexual abuse, they'll see themselves as as a, as a victim, right? But the thing you need to realize is that you are not your life story. And your life story is just how you experience, um, you know, your physical, how your uh, your you experience um, your physical self experiences uh, life on this planet. So the question then arises: uh, Who am I? And this is a question that everybody asks at some point in their lives. I love that. Uh, in that little clip, and also when you were talking earlier, you were emphasizing, you know, we don't want to be resisting things because, uh, because uh, you know, what you resist persists is is kind of, yes. you know, uh, so you know, instead you're taking people through how to how we can on this journey really as humans, you know, take in what is here now mm -hmm. and and uh, and then and that's part of this successful journey into flow, isn't it? It is. It is, Steve, because the thing is that, you know, where resistance comes in, I feel, is um, is at the level of our emotions. Right. Because, you know, we are like I already mentioned, we are all going to experience those negative and challenging emotions because, you know, circumstances in our lives are never going to remain static. Our life is a dynamic process. Things are always changing. Right. I mean, especially now with like things are changing. So they're, they're changing so rapidly. And I'm not, not, not just talking about technology, but I mean, obviously technology was always there and it's, and it's accelerating, but just the, the nature of, of how we interact and, and you know, how, um, you know, uh, nature of relationships. Um, so, so the thing is that, you know, 
it, when things changing so rapidly, we are going to experience all sorts of uh, emotions and um, especially trying to keep up with the pace of change. And, and, and it's, it's not just about experiencing our emotions. It's also about, um, you know, taking time for ourselves, right? Really, um, you know, taking that time to just be with ourselves because the, the most important relationship that you have is you with yourself, right? That's more important than your relationship with anyone else. Because if you are not in good relationship with yourself, then you will not be in good relationship with other people. And then there's this, there's this other, um, other pandemic out there. And it's, it's not just the pandemic of fear and anxiety, but there's this pandemic of, of kind of um, a, a lack of self-compassion or self-loathing that, that a lot of people have. And a lot of that arises from challenges and difficult experiences and traumas uh, that are all part of, of our life story. And in that, in that clip, what, was I, what, what I was trying to emphasize is that we are not our stories. We are not um, what we've experienced in our past, no matter how traumatic it has been. That is not who we are. We are that deeper consciousness, that being that presence, that, um, you know, spirit, if you may, uh, that actually permeates all life, all living and non-living things, and permeates the universe. That's who we are. And that is how our, where our connection arises. That is how we are all connected. An interesting point I just want to bring up, you know, one of the things I've learned with, through t treating people with acute and chronic illness, the one part that, that physicians are not good at dealing with, with their patients, is the fear that the patient has around their illness. It's not just the, the symptoms, it's not just the diagnosis they're dealing with, but they're dealing with the emotions around what they've been diagnosed with. Whether it's diabetes or heart disease or cancer or whatnot, or you're or acutely ill in the hospital, there's that fear. And then we need to help our patients move through that fear because without that moving through that fear, they're not going to heal, they're not going to get better because that fear induces stress, which affects the immune system, doesn't allow you to heal. So we have to get better as a healthcare community in helping patients deal with that fear that arises out of their, their, their diagnosis. Patricia, if you want to come on screen, let us know. We'll bring you on screen. I'm going to read her question. Uh, so she says, Dr. Nauman, um, please expand upon the roles, gratitude, and awareness of our own and each other's spiritual nature plays in health and healing. Yeah, so that's a very, very important uh, gratitude and awareness. Uh, so gratitude is a very, very important tool that I that I do discuss in my program in the section on story. And the thing is, no matter where we find ourselves in our lives, we always have something to be grateful for, no matter what challenges we are facing, right? Uh, it could be as simple as, I mean, you know, the air we breathe or we have access to clean water or, you know, I have food on, on the table or a roof over my head. It ha doesn't have to be something elaborate. Um, but, you know, especially in times that we are challenged, that we're facing adversity, we need to be grateful for, um, we, need, we need to pay respect to gratitude in the sense that we need to uh, show our gratitude for, for the things in our life that we actually have despite our challenges. And the way I, I teach this in the course is keeping a gratitude journal where at the end of the day, um, you know, it could be in the beginning, but most, for most people it's the end, where you write out three different things in your gratitude journal that you are grateful for, no matter what you've been through in that day, right? Because you can always find something to be grateful. And this, you know, it has, you know there's studies that have shown that um, practicing and expressing gratitude um, improves uh, happy, uh, increases happiness, improves well-being, um, and and even helps people uh, heal. It helps them in the healing process, no matter what they're dealing with, uh, whether it's physical, emotional healing, or otherwise. So, yes, there, gratitude is very, very important, and it is something I do discuss in my course. So, Gabriella brings in this question. She says, "Doctor Naim, how do we detect?" bad emotions in the body? Mm. Okay, that's a very, very good question. So what happens is with um, suppressed and 
uh, suppressed emotions. Like say we've had some difficult experiences, we've had some painful emotions, and we don't allow ourselves to feel them. They can often manifest as symptoms in the body, right? Um, they can manifest in any number of any number of ways. It could be, um, you know, respiratory problems, shortness of breath, cough. It could be um, pain. It could be pain because you know there's a lot of people that suffer with chronic pain, and studies show that 80 percent of those people, if you investigate them with uh, with imaging, with um, with blood tests or other diagnostic uh, methods that we use as physicians, you will find no cause of pain in 80% of people who have chronic pain. So I believe that a, I can't prove it, right? Because you cannot, it's hard to measure. You can't measure emotions. It's only through questioning people that you can find out. But a lot of, I believe a, a lot of that pain um, could be uh, suppressed negative emotions. Because what I found is that you know, when people who um, I've, I deal with with chronic pain, a, a lot of them, you know, their pain improves when they allow themselves to feel what they have um, suppressed. So it can manifest, they manifest as the various symptoms in the body. And pain is a common symptom. Shortness of breath is another one. Um, sometimes uh, there's a common diagnosis that we have in medicine. It's called irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome means you have abdominal pain, you may have diarrhea, constipation, and then you're investigated with x-rays. You may end up getting a, a, a test called a colonoscopy where they look in your bowels and they find nothing, but you still have these symptoms. So uh, irritable bowel syndrome has been associated with, um, you know, mental health issues, anxiety, depression, uh, and chronic fatigue and those sorts of things. So that's just an example. So there, there's many symptoms that can many ways that um, those uh, negative emotions can manifest in the body. And it's just, it's a matter of just being in tune and in touch with your body, right? Because you know long before um, a health professional or a physician knows that there is something wrong, right? Because a lot of times, you know, my patients will come to me and they can't really pinpoint it. And they'll say, I just felt like, I just felt unwell. It's not pain. It's not shortness of breath. It's not nausea it's not stomach pain or con whatever it's just i just i felt off there was something wrong so patients can detect those long before their physicians um can are, are can can recognize them so it's important to be in tune and in touch with your physiology and my program helps you do that uh, you know the physiology module especially so, I mean, you know, being true to yourself, I mean, that's a very interesting point, right? Because, you know, we, we all need to ask ourselves, um, are we living the life we are meant to live? Or are we living the life that has been given to us? So what do I mean by that? You know, by the time you're born and, you know, as you know, from the time you're born and as you grow up in this world, we are conditioned. We are conditioned by everything around us. We're conditioned by... Um, our families, we're conditioned by our peers, we're conditioned by the education system, we're conditioned by the media, by the mass media, by popular culture, by, by social media, by advertising, by marketing. And everything around us wants us to fulfill their agenda, right? But very few people stop and ask themselves, um, they stop and ask, they don't ask themselves, well, who, who am I, first of all, which is a question which was in the clip that you played. But another important question that we need to ask ourselves is, why am I here? Why am I here? Because, you know, we're not here to be pigeonholed into a certain category. We're not here to fill a, a career, a, 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 a job position um, that is, uh, that is uh, available for us. We're not here to follow a certain career path, we are here on this planet to discover who we truly are. And we are those conscious beings, uh, you know, that being, that consciousness, that spirit. And we do it in the context of this life on this planet, our physical world. And we all have a deeper meaning to our lives and we all have a greater mission. So we all have the same purpose. Everyone has the same purpose. The purpose is to discover who we truly are.
which is that consciousness, but how that purpose is expressed is different from each of us. How it is expressed in this physical plane, in this world, is um, our mission, our reason for being. And it's up to each of us to discover what that reason is. And, it, and, and, and you can do this through, through a number of, number of uh, questions you can ask yourself. Um, I even thought about writing a third book. I'm working on a second book, a third book about 101 questions. Uh, I'll see. I may be, may be writing that as well. But here are some questions you can ask yourselves. Um, you know, what can I do where I don't notice the time passing and it just, I don't even notice an hour has gone by? What are my skills and talents and abilities that people compliment me on? What did I love or enjoy doing when I was a child that felt timeless? Um, you know, what are, uh, and, and what are the things that I'm drawn to, um, that, uh, that I really migrate towards in my life. And it, I'm not talking about a job or a career. It could be anything. Um, it could be that you love art. You love to draw, you love to paint. It could be that you are musically inclined. You are, you love to play an instrument. It could be that you know you're great at speaking. It could be that you're a great writer. It could be that you're 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 great at a, you're a great athlete. It could be anything. It's up to each of us to discover why we're truly here because we all have the same purpose. But how that purpose is expressed is different for each of us, and that is how we find out why we are here, our greater mission on this planet. And if more people um, would find out why they're truly here and their true mission. In this world, the world would be a much better place than it is now. Absolutely. Boy, and we all have our own station in life, and uh, we're guided to it, right, as you share when we follow this journey into flow or consciousness. So beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so, and again, thank you uh, for that question. Uh, I think that question was from uh, was from Sam. So now there's a... Uh, um, and we've only got a couple uh, couple of minutes. We're actually already at the top of the hour. This hour has gone incredibly fast. Thank you, so fast. viewers. We've had, and we still have questions we can't get to. So, uh, wow, uh, we're just we've been we've uh, had a lot of questions come in here during the hour. So, thanks, viewers, for for uh, just bringing all of these questions to uh, to Naman while he's here. So, here's a question from anonymous and. Uh, um, and this boy, this gets at your uh, your journey and your work. It's uh, unfortunately, uh, as this person says, I smoked for years. I quit over two years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm in my mid 60s and I'm on oxygen most of the time. I'm also in pulmonary rehab. I've got mm -hmm. COP D and want to know what you have to say about getting better or healing. Right, right. So the thing is that, you know, COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And it's a it's a it's a diagnosis that occurs from people who have smoked heavily throughout their lives. Right. And often, you know, when people end up on oxygen, a lot of the damage has been done. Right. Um, you know, I would I would um, commend that anonymous person for for quitting smoking. I mean, that is like it is so hard to uh, to get rid of negative habits. And I know this from my patients and I, and I give that person credit for quitting smoking as I do all my patients who do that because it's so hard to do. You know, what I would say is that, um, you know, you, you may not necessarily be able to change your physiology. Now there is something about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. If you quit smoking, your lungs will get better. Okay. Your lungs do improve by just quitting smoking. However, they may not get, they won't get back to normal, but then there, there's other parts of your life that you can look at, like just like we've talked about in this program. You can look at your thinking, your thoughts. You can look at, you know, your limiting beliefs. Do you have any limiting beliefs? What is it that led you to smoking in the first place? Um, was it like a way to deal with stress? Did they deal with anxiety? Was it, um, was it uh, something, something else? I mean, look at why, you know, you had that habit for so long. Maybe there is a pattern of negative thinking. Maybe there is some limiting beliefs, but you've overcome that. So then go further, go deeper, go deeper into your thinking, go deeper into your emotions. Are you hanging on to any negative emotions, any, um, any pain, uh, emotional pain from the past? Um, you know, what was the life story that led you to, to, to smoke and what can you learn from that? So I encourage people to look at those aspects of their lives. Not, and, and you may not necessarily be able to normalize your physiology, but, you know, you can look at those higher aspects of who you are. Also, a uh, shout out to Nanette Kennedy, D. Meyer, Garth Catterall, uh, Karen Gordon, um, all of the team that's been that's here 
actually behind the scenes, creating these, uh, pulling questions and comments off of these various environments, helping uh, Jim with the broadcast. So thank you to all of you. And, and then most of all viewers, thanks for joining us here on your Friday afternoon as we talk about uh, our mission and humanities team. We're a global nonprofit. Our mission is to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040. That's in 19 years. So thanks viewers. Thank you, uh, Noman. And uh, thanks team. We'll be back with you here Thank next you. week. We've got a great uh, special guest in store. Everybody have a great uh, rest of the day, Friday and weekend. And uh, Noman, a, a, a total delight here being with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I enjoyed this, uh, this time. Okay. And love and peace and blessings, everybody. Have a great rest of the day and weekend here. Take care. If you'd like to receive all of our new podcast episodes, please click on the subscribe button. To find out more about Humanities Team transformational education programs and about how you can help support our mission, please visit us online at humanitiesteam.org, where you can also sign up for our email list so we can let you know about our free online events and other news about what we're up to each week. And again, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review. Thank you.